The fallout between President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto has never been so apparent, never been so public. An empty chair, remember that picture at the COVID-19 National Conference, will be seen by many observers as both William Ruto's sharp rebuke of his boss and daring to, or daring invitation to the president to an open street brawl. Beyond the chaos it has occasioned in the Jubilee Party, what does the public display of animosity portend for the Jubilee government? Well, first things first, let's listen to what Jubilee Vice Chair David Murade had to say and the Deputy President as well. I suspect because of the way he was treated at uh, Jubilee, he kind of felt he's being edged out of government. Now we are refusing with the party and he's maybe on his way out of the party and possibly out of government. He has been on record saying he has no work, that he's not assigned work. You know, his work was taken over by Matiangi, because Matiangi is the minister coordinating other ministers. So the things he used to do nowadays are done by Matiangi. Kuna has watu wame kasirika na hii hasla nation. Kwa sababu wao wame faidika siku nyingi na siyasa ya ukabila na kugawanya watu na kuweka chuki mimi nataka niwaambie hasira yenu na hiyo matusi mnatuletea mnapoteza muda wenu Indeed, as President Kenyatta heads out to Europe uh, on an official trip, a show of political muscle continues at the official residence of the Deputy President in Karen, where each day seemingly present what looks like an early election campaign. Now, no one's better placed than the President and his deputy to explain the details of their growing differences. But in their place tonight, we engage insiders, Senator Aaron Cheriot, joining us on the program, together with Member of Parliament Gunjiri Wambogo to help unpack the issues on Newsnight. Keep tweeting. Hashtag Newsnight and the SMS line is 22422 and to both of my guests welcome to Newsnight. I want to begin by giving our viewers a picture of the COVID-19 National Conference yesterday. I know that uh, my two guests might not be able to see it from where they are but I'm sure they know what that picture is. A picture of His Excellency the President in the center, uh, many other officials and of course a green circle highlighting where the deputy president should have sat but was not. Now they say a picture is worth a thousand words. And I want to start with you, Honorable Gonjiri Wambugu, and hear from you what that picture, which I'm sure you've seen, if not today, you know, if not now earlier, tells you. Let's start there, Gonjiri. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Wehiga. I think that picture tells me, and not just me, it tells a lot of Kenyans that the deputy president's position is vacant. Um, it tells us that we do not have a deputy president, we don't have anybody working as deputy president right now, Be especially because uh, the person who is supposed to be sitting on that seat wasn't uh, incapacitated, he was just absent without apology. Uh, the person who was supposed to sit on that seat is a deputy, is a principal assistant to the president who was in uh, on location. Um, and, and I think that picture, that particular seat was also left uh, vacant uh, deliberately because um, I have been in a lot of uh, presidential functions and you will notice that if somebody does not come, that seat is actually moved away. I think the, there was a message that was also being put across that uh, we no longer have a serving vice president or we no longer have a serving that, deputy president. That, that would that be what I understand from that picture. Hon Honorable Ambuga, I want to interrupt you because the constitution is very clear about what it would take to vacate a seat like that. So for you to say that the seat that the, that the seat being vacant is indicative of the position being vacant is not true. Yep. No, 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 no. But it's something you don't understand, Wehiga. You work for citizen. You can choose not to go to work. But they you can choose. <laughs> you still be working for citizen. They will still be paying you salary. But if you decide not to come to work tomorrow, for example, um, and maybe you have the kind of contract that means you cannot get fired. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, I'm sure when, uh, the, the chairman would be unhappy, but you would not be at work. So the fact that that seat was empty, the fact that today, for example, you invited us for this show and you didn't show up, um, and then citizen decided to show us an empty seat, they'd be telling us why he is supposed to be here. He's not here. We don't know why he's not here. 
My goodness. Okay, I don't. So the seat you. would be vacant because you're not doing the work you are supposed to do at that moment in time. Okay, and as I mentioned, the constitution is very clear on what it would mean to vacate that seat. But you, you are making your point, which I want Aaron Cheriot uh, to respond to tonight. Aaron, thanks for joining us. Uh, your thoughts on that, and of course, I'll also refer to a tweet that you posted yesterday as well. But let's first give you a chance uh, to weigh in on that picture. Well, uh, thank you, Wahiga, and uh, good evening to the viewers. I like, the I like the introduction that you gave to this uh, topic, that um, the best place people to answer uh, the questions that you're asking us is the uh, president and his deputy. But in their absence, uh, some of us can give what we, you consider to be our opinions on, on this particular item. Wahiga, it is instructive to note that uh, since the outbreak of COVID in Kenya, there have been at least 12 uh, public engagements that the government has had uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, response and uh, communications uh, that have been given out by the president, where we've seen him in, uh, engage in meetings and afterwards address uh, uh, the media, either in State House, Harambe House, and all these other places. If somebody never saw it as a problem that the deputy president did not feature in those meetings, it is total hypocrisy for them to cause a fuss out of his absence yesterday. Because if it was instructively considered that his presence at the table of handling this COVID pandemic in the country is not as important, then why invite him to the conclusion of you know, this seminar where you're supposed to uh, share your experiences and speak about you know, what contribution government has done and all these kind of things? I think it would have been a waste of time. I haven't had an opportunity to speak to him and ask him why he did attend, but I am glad he did not. Because had he, had he done that, it would have been a betrayal on the part of those who believe uh, in him as a leader, and he would have sanctioned the kind of illegal things that have been going on with uh, the management of this um, uh, <laughs> pandemic. You know, there have been so many things that have been reported that haven't gone right. So. If you didn't value him when you are creating uh, the committees, when you're meeting uh, dignitaries, when you're flying in governors from different parts of the country to come and uh, address uh, the country with regards to their response, so why, why, why all of a sudden be angry that he didn't uh, show up? Aaron, I'm, I'm, I'm trying and I'm struggling to understand how attending a conference is uh, sanitizing what you're calling illegal activities. And we actually have a tweet that you posted yesterday. I don't know if we're able to put that up. You actually said, mm -hmm. let's stop the hypocrisy. If uh, William Ruto's contribution counted, how comes he has never been invited to any GOK COVID-19 response meeting? Now you want him to join the COVID millionaires in their sharing, their looting success, uh, and you carry on with that. How does attending that function you know, you know, ESCC are carrying out the investigations. We expect a report tomorrow. What did attending that conference have anything to do with uh, the investigation? I think that's what I don't get from you. It has everything to do with it. It has everything to do with it, Wahiga, because uh, many of the people that uh, were in that conference are the ones that are charged with the responsibility of ensuring that we, as a country, we manage our uh, resources in a prudent way, that our response is genuine, that we ensure that in all our activities we do it for the good will of Kenya. But I watched the entire conference. There was not a single mention of the lessons that have been learned. There was not an apology to the public that we have put ourselves in an embarrassing situation. This is not a small issue, Ahiga, that you want to quickly sweep under the carpet. Things are so bad that even donors cannot give us money because they know what they'll do with it cannot give us PPEs because they learned from what happened to the uh, donations that were given to Jack Ma. They are now opting to giving donations out directly to the people. It is so embarrassing. Therefore, it's not something that you want to casually pass away and say that it shouldn't have featured uh, during the deliberations of that meeting. You know? So, but the main point that I want us to focus on and remain uh, uh, instructive during uh, this engagement, mm -hmm. uh, Wahiga, is the fact that uh, there was a decision made, and I say this because I strongly believe that uh, this was not no mean coincidence, that out of the 12 or more meetings that were done uh, at the highest level of government uh, in terms of how to uh, manage the pandemic, he was not invited to any of them. Okay. And the last time that uh, they invited him, you remember what happened? They disconnected his internet. So why, why, why go there to be, to be embarrassed? These are my own thoughts. I could be wrong. 
but I, I can assure you those thoughts resonate okay. with so many Kenyans. I, I was about to ask you to, to provide proof of that, but you've said those are your own thoughts and you could be wrong, so you've answered my next question. Let me allow Agonjiri to respond uh, to a bit about what you've said. Agonjiri, go ahead. Uh -huh. I think the first thing I would like to say is that I really hope that uh, Senator Chariot is speaking for himself. Because if this is a thinking that is existing in the mm. Deputy President's office, or the Deputy President himself, I would be very, 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 very embarrassed. Because you cannot tell me that as a Deputy uh, to the President, you must be invited for all 12 events to attend. So he's telling us that if, you, if, if the President decides to do six meetings and doesn't invite the, pres uh, the Deputy President for five, even if he invites him for the sixth one, he will not come because he was invited for the, fifth, for the first five. It's a sense of entitlement. Um, it's a very, very high sense of entitlement that the Deputy President would prefer uh, to stay at home. Uh, rather than attend a function because he wasn't, he wasn't invited for the other ones. And uh, something else, uh, Wahiga, it's important for us to know that if that is how the Deputy President feels, if the pres Deputy President feels that coming for that conference would have been sanitizing uh, that conference, he had two options. He could have come for the conference and made that his statement that I am here not to sanitize this conference. Their money has been stolen. Uh, uh, Senator Chariot says that many things were not said in that conference. The deputy president could actually have attended and said those things. Nobody tells him what to say. Second thing is, if he actually completely believes that the, that the deputy president does not want to be part of the kind of problems that were in COVID, then the deputy president just needs to leave government. Because you cannot be in government I saw him today riding on a wheelbarrow, and he was riding on a wheelbarrow in the, in, the deputy, in the official deputy president's residence. I mean, if he has a problem with this government, then what he actually needs to do is just step out of the government and let the government fall or fail, because it seems like that is what he wants it to do, so that he's able to say that these people are not listening to me, these people don't invite me to their forums, these people don't, don't take me seriously, then why is he still in the government? Why is, he taking, why is he having his cake and eating it too? Why is he using the, the resources of government as a deputy president and then refusing to take the responsibility of what the government is doing, including the mistakes it makes? Because you cannot be the deputy president of a republic, of a country, mm -hmm. continue earning a salary, continue benefiting from the resources of that office, and then start imagining that you're going to exclude yourself from the mistakes of that government if that government is making any mistakes. That is, I mean, they, they, this, I have had the deputy president make this statement very many times, Wajinga Walisha Kenya. If he thinks that he can serve as the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya and then say that the, that the Jubilee government has failed, which is deputy party leader too, and then try and convince Kenyans to elect him based on that, I think he is just lying to us. If he believes that the gov government has failed, if he believes the government has been corrupt on the issue of COVID, he needs to leave government. And then he can actually run his campaign from outside government. Okay. You, you, the government. you, you referenced uh, how the deputy president spent the better part of his day today. We have some of those pictures. And le okay, let's listen in first. Okay, and I, I trust that both of you can still hear me even as we play some of those pictures. And, and Aaron Chiriot, I want to ask you this. Now, one of the uh, you know, criticisms that have been leveled against the Deputy President uh, by those uh, within the Jubilee Party is that he began early campaigns at a time when it had been announced that there will be no early campaigns. Um, an early campaign for the 2022 election. When you look at that video, many say tonight that that looks like early campaigns. So do critics of the Deputy President, the likes of uh, Vice Chair David Murade, actually have a point when they highlight some of the activities that Deputy President is involved in and not one like the one which took place yesterday? Uh, well, Wahiga, uh, that is uh, absolute misrepresentation of facts as they are. Because if you are to ask me, what he was doing today is that he met young people drawn from uh, various uh, parts of this city, he en encouraged them, uh, gave personal uh, donations. Uh, the theme of the program that he has been running is that every hustle matters. This is being someone being ingenious. 
ensuring that out of the platform that he has as a leader in this country, he complements what government is doing with his own additional uh, resources and uh, time to ensure that he can empower young people and they can eke out a living out of the programs that he has initiated for them. How somebody considers that to be campaign baffles me because what are we elected to office to do then? What, what does, uh, you know, when you, when, if you're used to being idle, then you, 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 you find so much trouble in those who have got more valuable and useful things to do with their time. Would uh, Gujiri Wambogo have wished that the deputy spent, spent his time idling on Facebook the entire day like he does? You know, we've got to be serious as leaders. We have been elected and people expect services from us. Therefore, any leader who feels that whatever he's doing is not right, then does not deserve the position of being called a leader in this country. Because you've got to appreciate that government cannot solve all the challenges that many of our young people continue to do. What Ngujiri Wambugu and the likes should be doing is that he needs to ensure that in Nyeri town, he also uses whatever little resources he has to make the life of a hustler there better. But not just to come and complain and say, oh, what you're doing is campaigns. But there's something that I do not uh, want to miss out on, uh, Wahiga, because mm -hmm. uh, I see Ngujiri and the likes keep on referring to that if he wants, uh, he, may, he may leave government. That is not in their place to decide. It was not in your place in the first place on how he serves in this government. So don't arrogate to yourself responsibilities that you do not have. He was elected by over 8 million Kenyans. Until those over 8 million Kenyans tell him otherwise, he shall continue to serve, him, to serve them in a way that he wishes better. But further to speak to this issue, Wahiga, you know, we are reducing a very important debate into a Ruto issue. And I, I, Let I, us remember, and mm -hmm. I, said this in, 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 I said this in one of your channels recently, mm -hmm. Wahiga, that this discussion needs to be elevated beyond Ruto. It needs to be the discussion of what is happening in our 47 county governments as well. Okay. Are you before, also before aware we get, before, that before, out of the 47 before, county hang governments... Hang on, hang on, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. I had a question for you on the same. And my question is, we've talked about Ruto and the, and, and the president and the issues of the party, but many tonight are more concerned about the issue of government and governance. Okay? And they are concerned that if you have mm -hmm. a government where mm -hmm. the two leaders are seemingly pulling in different directions then can we expect mm -hmm. there to be a concerted effort of development in one direction in the two years that are remaining of their term mm -hmm. i think that's what concerns many kenyans tonight before we even go to counties talk to me about that exactly that is a converse that is a conversation now that we need to be having as a country because these two offices that of the president and that of his deputy are constitutional offices that kenyans created in the 2010 constitution therefore if we do not have symphony in the way these two offices are, are, are functioning then we need to have a broader discussion forget about these dances of having to reduce every conversation to be about oh ruto did this or he did that what is the place of the president in this mess what is his answer to the fact that him and his deputy are seemingly not pulling together as is expected of the two of them. That is what we need to be questioning. And that's why I have told you, Wahiga, yes. that the reason why we keep on getting this wrong, we've, we've got to divorce the personalities that are involved in this conflict and raise it to be a constitutional issue. Because I said it, that in our 47 county governments, you will be lucky to count on one hand if you find a governor and his deputy who are still working. This behavior that you're seeing at the national government, it's has permeated into our county governments. And therefore, we as a people need to put to task those who are charged with this responsibility to ensure that once you've been elected with a particular individual, that you see through the vision that you are elected to implement together. Okay. Otherwise, if you are unable, the mm -hmm. most honorable thing to do is to come back to the people and say, we, you elected the two of us together, either as governor and deputy, president and deputy, but we have found it uh, untenable for us to work together. Please dissolve this uh, government and let us le le give us a fresh mandate with okay. those we think that we can work together with. Aaron, uh, I, I do need to take a break, but I, ha I must allow Wambugu to respond to what you've said. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. 
Well, Higa, I think the first thing, uh, I will come back to that sense of entitlement that Aaron seems to have and which I, I have seen in the office of the Deputy President and the Deputy President himself. First and foremost, I heard Aaron say that 8 million people voted for Deputy Pre uh, President William Ruto. I shall, I don't even think that even uh, requires a, a response because that is not true. The second thing I need to point out is that I've heard him say that the two leaders need to be pulling together. I need to clarify something to Aaron. The two, the, we don't have two leaders in, this, in the Republic of Kenya. We have one. We elected the president, one president of the Republic of Kenya. He is supposed to pull, the deputy president is supposed to help him to pull. For some reason, the deputy president expects that he is supposed to be to be to, to have his own session of what he's supposed to be pulling and then the president has his own and then when he doesn't have he throws a tantrum uh, sulks and goes and writes a, a wheelbarrow and there's also something else that i also need to point out to higa this issue of the deputy president imagining see we and it's true what aaron has said is true we have two people who are constitutional offices meaning that the president cannot actually fire the deputy president so what does this mean if the deputy president refuses to work there's absolutely nothing the president can do about it if the deputy president refuses to come for a COVID conference there's nothing the president can do about it. We can't fire the guy. We have to somehow carry the burden of, work, of going a, a, along with a deputy president who has refused to work for the next two years, and there's nothing, and the Kenyan public has to continue paying him a salary, paying for his security guards, and protecting him and keeping him in a really grand house up in Karen as a deputy president, and he's not doing any work of the deputy president. Because Wahiga, what you saw yesterday, what you saw today on the wheelbarrow, wasn't the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya pushing a wheelbarrow. What you saw today was a 2022 candidate, aspirant for president, pushing a wheelbarrow. The deputy president, William Ruto absconded the, office, the duties and office of the deputy president a long time ago. What you have been seeing him in, the, in, the, in, in rallies, I mean, selling the Hustler Nation, whatever you are seeing him, is a candidate for 2022. It is not the deputy president. The guy stopped working as the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya a what, long what, time ago. When you say he has left working. the president with the entire responsibility. Mm -hmm. He did. Because working as a deputy president, Waihiga, working as a deputy president according to the Constitution, is assisting the president. The deputy president has not assisted the president on a single errand or a single uh, responsibility for the last one year. So how is he working as a deputy president? He's been running campaigns. He's been holding rallies. He's been going again. He's been walking around without a mask, despite the fact that the government he serves is asking people to wear masks. He's been carrying, pushing wheelbarrows. He's been calling people to his place, in, to, his, to the house we gave him as a Kenyan people, as deputy president, to give people mkoko tennis. That is what he has been doing. He is supposed to be helping the president. I would love to hear from Aaron what the deputy president has helped the president to do over the last one year according to the constitution okay you you've asked a question uh, aaron can you respond to that after the break i'm told i must take this break when we come back okay so, so hold on to that aaron hold on to that when we come back of course we take a look at the future not just about the jubilee party but about government a government that you trust to deliver services but a government that we that at this time doesn't seem to be pulling in the same direction that's a bit about